So talk a little bit more about seeing around corners. And I would like to actually, as we start this interview, learn a little bit more about you, Rita McGrath. You know, I, I know it's a very interesting point in your life and in your career. And I'm going to guess, this is only my theory, but I'm going to guess that the pandemic gave you an opportunity, right, to step back and to look, to look at everything, you know, your body of work, which isn't this, which your body of work is like this, and to reassess, right, to reassess and to strategize your next best steps. Mm -hmm. So specifically and personally, how has that worked for you and in your business and in your life and career? Well, the pandemic, as many people in the, the kind of idea business will tell you, uh, was a big interruption to how we'd been operating before. So most people in my sort of world spend a lot of time on airplanes and in airports, uh, traveling around to conferences and events and ma management meetings. And we kind of sleepwalked into this yeah, sure, I'll fly to New Delhi, India for a three hour workshop, which I have done. Um, and I think we're more thoughtful now about how we plan our time. Um, for me, probably the biggest adventure in the pandemic has been to create a side company to my normal speaking, writing, thinking idea business to try to take those ideas and put them into practice. So it's a tools company called Belize, and Belize does three things. There's, there's some advisory, and typically it's big companies who are very focused on the day-to-day -day and the current business and really need to learn how to innovate. And so it's some advisory, just kind of, here's how you set up a growth board, here's how you create your, your, your governance system, here's the kind of funding you should be thinking about for innovation all the time frames, here's the metrics, you know, there's some advising needed. And then we have a software spine, which you can think of almost like a guide, it's like a map. Um, so it's not a software product particularly, but it's like a, a way of structuring your um, movement forward. And then uh, we have some learning modules, which can help your teams get up to speed quickly on what they need to know to take the next step on their innovation journeys. So a lot of my time during the pandemic has really been to think hard about what that business should be doing for clients. And we're kind of at the brink of rolling a lot of that out. So that was one. But definitely rethinking things like travel, right? You know, I mean, and, and there's so much that we can do that doesn't require getting on an airplane these days. And we've learned that, I mean, and you can see employees have learned that too, right? They're saying, hang on, I'm commuting an hour to go to an office to stare into a computer screen for eight hours and because we must be joking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And in terms of your business, you know, I mean, the growth has been magnificent and I know basically it's it's just beginning. Let's go back a little bit to the modules that you had had talked about a little while ago. Can you give us a sense of what of how many and what the specific topics are and how how they can be most helpful? Sure. So the learning modules were designed to go together with a concept called discovery driven growth. And discovery-driven growth is an approach to planning and managing under high conditions of uncertainty. So typically it's around the innovation process. And what I find is most leaders today are very good at running their businesses. So if you think about the, the steady state of a competitive advantage, they're really good at that. They've not been taught or trained on how to build a new advantage. And they've not been taught or trained about how to transform your business when something you used to count on has kind of gone into decline. So how do you transform if you're a CD manufacturer? You know, nobody's using CDs anymore. All the music's coming through the air. How do you transform your business as Sony had to when they had to go from you know, music stored on media to music delivered some other way? Um, so discovery-driven growth is a disciplined approach to how you do that. And so the courses are designed around one of its core principles, which is you learn, but you learn at checkpoints. And a checkpoint might be, I'm gonna do some initial customer interviews. I'm going to create a prototype. I'm going to design a digital strategy. I'm gonna think about my ecosystem strategy. Um, it could look like that. And so um, the- And then I'm going to guess, and I don't mean to interrupt you here, but then I'm going to guess between checkpoints, you take a breath, you mm -hmm. stop, you slow down, and then you assess. Exactly, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is you, it's, it's almost like if I wanted to walk from here to downtown, right? Like, like I could not map out that entire journey. But what I could tell you with pretty 
good accuracy is how many steps it's going to take me to get from where I am right now to my front door, right. <laughs> you know, and then I stop and I say, okay, how many steps to get to the end of the block? And then how many steps to, you see what I'm saying? You break your monolithic decision process into pieces. So the specific content of the course is there's a fun, fun, fundamentals course, which teaches the principles of discovery driven planning. Then there's a course on customer interviews, a course on creating prototypes, a course on ecosystem design and data digital uh, a course on well you know those prototypes not all of them are going to work out so there's a course on learning from disappointment and surprises and then we get to the <laughs> fascinating question of um, customer segmentation which most organizations mess up so it's one foundations course and then five courses on customer insight i love the way you term it learning from disappointment and surprises you know you're giving it that positive spin there rita just like you used the word a little while ago transformation right transformation because at the end of the day transformation is really change right we need to change we need to tweak things and learn and grow and continuously change in these uncertain incredibly uncertain times and as we know needless to say uh, change is not easy not easy at all yeah. so how do you address that well, I think as a leader, and this I think is useful for your listeners, um, one of the most valuable things you can do for your people and your teams is to absorb uncertainty. And what I mean by that is don't let them wallow in, gee, should I make this decision or that decision? Or, you know, what, like, what should I do? Because people are terrible at uncertainty. They freeze, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can tell people, hey, look, I don't know any more than you do, but for this week, here's what I'd like you to assume, you know, assume this customer is going to do that. Assume the supplies are going to arrive in time. Assume we're not going to have a shortage of whatever. And if you operate within that assumptional universe, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And we'll just acknowledge that. But if you and are tweak curious, along the way, right, mm -hmm. and we'll adjust, right. So I think taking that uncertainty away from people is hugely helpful, because it frees them up to take action, like they know what the specifications are that they're supposed to act to. And whether your business is tiny, or whether your business is huge, I think that's a fundamentally important leadership activity that you can do. 